Hello, good morning, good morning, welcome to another glorious day, we give glory to God. Hello, for good morning, for his mercy, good morning, his glory and kindness, to another glorious thanking him for this great and God. awesome day Hello, that we have given unto our his mercy, we magnify his holy name, and we declare that he is worthy of our praise, he is worthy to be exalted, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you know the story, every time we wake up in the morning, we give him glory and we thank him for the number one miracle, which is the gift of life. To be alive is by the mercies of God. There are quite a lot of folks who had slept and they never woke up this morning. So whenever we wake up in the morning, we give him glory, praise and honor because he alone is worthy of our praise. And that's why I'm excited. I'm excited for this day. The Bible said this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will be glad and we will rejoice in this beautiful day. Welcome to today's morning devotion. My name is uh, Michelle Carson. I'm speaking to you from the city of Rumia, north of Poland in Europe. And whatever you're listening to, you are welcome to join us if you have uh, questions and you want direct prayers, please don't hesitate to let us know. Now let's go into the subject of the day. Our Bible reading is taken from the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 17. And the topic for this morning is recipe for victory. Yesterday we had a recipe for success, a good success. Today is a recipe for victory. All in preparation as we are about to hit the, the, you know, take up our life again and try to get to normalcy after or during still some of this uh, pandemic that is still going on in some places. It's not yet over, but we have to continue to live. God has given us the opportunity. We were not among those who passed on during this season, but God's mercy, we are kept alive and we have to pick up our life once again and live. And now the, the challenge is how do I go out there and succeed? Many will feel that the year is already gone, it's already June, today is the 10th of June in the year 2020, and half of the year is already disbanded. A lot has happened at the, you know, at the first half of this year. So many are challenged and wondering how will they get out there and, and, and have victory or succeed in whatever they are doing. And that's why this morning devotion is just focused on how to get us up and running once again. Praise the Lord. Our topic says, like I said, recipe for victory. We're going to look at different ingredients from the Word of God that when we put them together will definitely make us to become victorious. The Bible declares we are victorious in Christ Jesus, but we need to be able to manifest that. And we have to take these ingredients from the Word of God. Like I said, our Bible reading is taken from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 17. It is a familiar story in the Bible, a very popular story. If you've been in Sunday school one time or the other, you would have heard of this story of David and Goliath. Within this particular uh, you know, chapter of the scripture, we will find a recipe of how to live a victorious life. And that's what we're going to examine this morning. Now let's get into Bible reading. Are we supposed to read from verse 4 to 51? But we will not read all the verses. We will pick some of the verses for want of time. But let's just start from the beginning and lay a foundation. Take up your Bible and let's go. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Scripture. It says, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Sukkot, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Sukkot and Azekah in Ephes Gamim. Verse 2, And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the, the battle in array against the Philistines. Verse number three, 
and the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Verse 4, And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set the battle in array? Am I not a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. Verse 9. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then he shall be our servants and save us. And the Philistines say, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of the Ephratite of Benjamin, Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. Now let's stop there. Let's stop there. We will be picking some of the verses, and then we will look at the ingredients for, uh, to form a recipe for victory so that we can have exactly the same victory that David had over Goliath. Hallelujah. Now, you know, the, the, there is something so interesting about this, this scripture this morning. The Bible says, you know, the, the, the two armies, the armies of Israel, the armies of the Philistines, they came to battle. And the Bible says they set the, the battle in a way and wait for one another to make a move. But while they were waiting for either of the armies to make a move, the Bible said they came out a champion from the camp of the Philistines. They came out a champion whose name was Goliath. And, and the Bible says this man challenged the entire nation. And his challenge was not to the entire army. It was for individual who will be able to engage and beat him in the fight. And if that individual can come and beat him in the fight, what is going to happen is that the entire nation will be enslaved to either of the side that has the victory. Praise the Lord. So Goliath challenged the entire army. And when we read there, you find the description of this man, Goliath. You know, I, I don't even want to go to that detail of the description, but it's fearful and fearsome to even read about the details that is given here. The Bible gives us the detail to show that this man, his height, you know, his, you know, his armory, you know, was very sophisticated and unusual. And, you know, and that's why the Bible says when the, when the armies of Israel heard and saw Goliath, the champion, they call him the champion because he has never been defeated before. He's always a winner. Goliath was so confident that, you know, nobody can challenge him. He's, he has, you know, a record, you know, victory, you know, all the time. He has always, whoever he engages, he gives that person a knockout, a knockout completely. So he, Goliath was so sure that there is nobody among the armies of Israel that was able to defeat him. And that's why he threw the challenge, because his record shows that he has never been defeated. Hallelujah. He's never been defeated. They, you know, nobody has ever succeeded to defeat Goliath. So he was so sure when he challenged the armies of Israel and said, choose you a man. Now, let me, let me, let me say something here. You know, sometimes, you know, 
uh, as believers, it is quite possible that we go to church and we pray as a congregation, as a body of people, and we pray and we shout. And in some of the Pentecostal churches, in some of our churches, we bind it. We can bind the devil. We can say anything to the devil when we are praying in the church, you know, corporately. But there comes a time, there comes a time that we have to, you know, engage the enemy on one-on-one -on -one basis. It's like, you know, if I, had, I used to remember those days, those days in school when, when, you, when you are among your friends, you can be boastful. And if the other guy is tough, he'll say, I'll catch you after school. And after school, he'll wait for you. It will be one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> and then there will not be any friends in it. So this was like that case where the enemy sits back and Goliath said, I don't want any congregational fight. I don't want any congregational prayer. This is me and you. Let's engage one in one. I want you to choose a man to come and bless me. Which talks about individual victory. We need to be able to have a, or experience individual victory in our lives. Not just the victory that we heard about, not corporate victory, but individual victory. And that's my emphasis this morning. The recipe for you to be able to have victory, you know, on your own, be a child of God, being born again, filled with the Spirit of God. Is it easy? Is it possible to live a victorious life every day? The Bible says it's possible. And we just need to be able to get the right recipe or the right ingredients for that victory and, you know, to, to continually manifest in our lives. Now, so the Bible says here that, you know, Goliath challenged the, the entire army and all the generals and all the lieutenants in the armies of Israel, they, 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 they were so dismayed, they were so afraid that they took cover. Nobody was willing to go and challenge Goliath. Hallelujah. And, and the Bible says, when we read that story, the Bible says, now that you know uh, Jesse, uh, who is the father of David, had some. David had some of his senior brothers in the army, and he was not, you know, uh, he was not one of those children that you know really show, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't. Maybe he didn't measure up the height, you know, as you know, as in the army, he didn't measure up that height as you know, as somebody that is able to to challenge or to go. You know, you know, David did not look like somebody that has that, you know, what it takes to be in the front line. And maybe the height did not measure up, you know, when you, or if David was to go for the selection process to be recruited into the army, David may not qualify. So the Bible says he was just, you know, the child in the house that was, you know, taking care of the home crews, and then he kept the sheep, you know, he was taking care of the, 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 the livestock in the family. Now, the Bible says, you know, at one point in time, the parents said, well, you need to take some foodstuffs to your brother, you know, at the front lines and, and check out how they are doing. And when you go there, just see how they, how, they, how they are. The parents naturally will be concerned. So David is on a journey to, uh, to see the brother. And the Bible says he went there. And when he got down there in verse 15, but David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew, uh, verse 16, and the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself for 40 days. So this went on for 40 days. And Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now for thy brother, for thy brethren, and a far of this patch corn and this ten loaves, and run to the camp. To thy brethren, and carry this ten cheese unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take a pledge. Go and check out how your brothers are doing. So that's what David was sent. He, David was not sent to fight Goliath. He was just there to make delivery, bring some foodstuffs, and 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 and, and see how the brothers are faring. Hallelujah. And, and the Bible says David went. In verse 21, while David was there in, in the camp uh, to deliver foodstuffs to the brother, the Bible says, you know, Goliath, you know, came out 
and begin to challenge because the Bible said this is what he was doing for 40 days. Every day he wakes up and stands and says, have you guys found anybody that is able to beat me? Is there anybody that is able to engage me? No, no, there was nobody that was found. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says in verse 22, and David left and his carriage in the hand of the keeper and the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, they came up the champion <laughs> and the foolish tent of God, Goliath by them out of the armies of the foolish tent and spake according to the same words and David. So this was a continuous, you know, situation. A continuous situation. It's easy, you know. And let me just pause here and say something. Sometimes, you know, things happen in our lives that continue for a long period of time. It could be sickness, it could be financial crisis, it could be marital crisis, you know, until we begin to feel that, you know, okay, you know, we begin to feel comfortable, we, somehow we develop some kind of technology or management skill to be able to manage the situation because it looks like it cannot go away. So this was something that repeatedly happened every day. It was a continuous process you know, that Goliath will come out and challenge the entire army of Israel. You know, and then say, so choose you a man. It happened every day. But at this point in time, in this instant, it happened when David was there, not as a soldier, but a, as an errand boy to deliver foodstuffs to his brothers and check out how they're, how they are faring. Hallelujah. And when David was there, this man Goliath came out. Uh, and, and the Bible says in verse 24, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. So David, David was, you know, he was not a soldier, you know. But these, these renowned soldiers, these guys that, that you know, has batches and, 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 and have been in battle before, when they saw Goliath, the Bible said they fled, everybody ducked and died. They, you know, they just run into cover. And they were so afraid. Here he comes. Here he comes. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up surely to defy the Israel? He's come up and he shall be that the man. And they tell the story to David. This man, you know, the king has promised that whosoever is able to, you know, kill this man or defeat this man will have his daughter, you know, for a wife. And his father's house will be free in Israel from all the tax from you know it was it was a great prize and when David spake unto the men that stood by saying what shall be done David wanted to hear it again so what did you say what did you say that will happen to any person that is able to defeat the the Goliath the champion and they repeated it and they emphasized it you know to him and he said in and the, and then they repeated it and when his brother saw how he became unusually interested uh you know in this in in, in killing of goliath or you know or in winning the prize they said well it, is, it would be time you, you have to go back home you know you remember you leave some of those you know uh you know sheep and goats and, and the cows in the field the livestock you have to go back there you know this is not for you just just you know get ready and go back the brother was the brothers were not excited. The Bible says in verse 28 that Eliab, his elder brother, heard when he spoke unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why comest thou here? What, what, what are you doing here? And what, why are you talking to these guys? You, you, you're done with it. You're supposed to go home. And in verse 29, David said, What have I done now? And David said, Well, I, what, you know, I'm just listening. I'm just, I'm just curious. What, you know. And he left there. And, the, you know, when he heard this word in verse 31, and the Bible said, when the words were heard, so David said, no, I am able to deal with this guy. No, why, why are you guys afraid? I'm able to deal with this guy. So David was showing confidence here. He was saying, I have the recipe to deal, you know, with Goliath. I have the recipe for victory. Hallelujah. He was confident because he had the recipe 
of you know for victory and that's what i want us to be able to do we want to we need to go out there you know after or during this pandemic knowing that we have the recipe for victory when everybody's afraid when everybody's to take initiative and take steps you know we we need to be able to go out there and demonstrate that we have the recipe for victory hallelujah 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 so this is this is what david david said no i'm able to deal with this guy and the matter was rehearsed you know until he came to the you know to the ears of the king and the king said and the king said who is this guy why is he so loud how is he so sure you know that you know uh that he's able to deal with this person so what what what, what has he got hallelujah what has he got you know, and and it was David was brought to the king in a long and short story. He was brought to the king, and when he was brought to the king, you know, and, and David said, "Well, I'm able to, you know, deal with this guy." And the king said, "Well, if you really want to take the risk, I have a good, you know, uh, a very, you know, you know, good, you know, uniform and and a shield, you know, as the king's, you know." Uh, uniform for the army. I have all the protective gears on, so you might want to, you know, go with that if you want to take the risk. <laughs> and David said, "No, I am not able to, you know, you know." Look at verse thirty-three. And Saul said to David, "Thou art able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but the youth, and is a man of war from his youth." The king said, "You can deal with this guy." This guy is a professional. This guy is a champion, and 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 you know it is not possible that that you can go against this person. Hallelujah! But David insisted, and the king said, "Well, you you know, take take my uniform, take my armor, put it on." And David put on the armor of Saul, and he said, "Well, I'm not able to go with this one because this one I have not proven it." Mm. That's something. I have not proven it. No, we're going to get to that. Just listen to this because I'm going to bring out the recipe from this book. Walk with me. I'll soon get there. Hallelujah. And David said, I have not proven this uniform. I cannot go out with it. And the long and the short story is that David went and on and defeat Goliath. What did he do? Let's, let's, let's see the, the, the recipe that David had. The number one recipe for victory that David stated is found in verse 26. Let's read verse 26. And David spoke to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to this man that killed these Philistines and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? While everybody called Goliath a champion, David did not call Goliath a champion. He called him uncircumcised. Mm. Uncircumcised. What does it really mean? That is the number one recipe. Goliath, every the king, everybody saw Goliath as a champion and called him a champion. The king called him a champion. The armies, the captains, the leaders call him a champion on both sides. Only David is the person who says, this man is not a champion. He's uncircumcised. Now, what does that mean in context? Now, circumcision was established between God and Abraham as part of the covenant for Israel. So any person that was not, you know, circumcised, was not in covenant relationship with God. Hallelujah. So what David recognized is that this man may be a champion. He may terrorize, but he's uncircumcised. He, he's not having an authority or relationship. He is not God sent. <laughs> he's not God sent. Hallelujah. So the first recipe is that you need to recognize that the champion is uncircumcised. He's not in covenant relationship with God. He's not from God. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Hallelujah. The problem may be there. It may be, it may have been there for too long. 
they, it, it may, they may not have found a solution. It may defy medic, medical solutions, scientific solutions. But, you know, because it's there and it looks, it cannot be solved, does not mean that it is from God. Now, look, look at what James says. James chapter number 1, verse 17. We're coming back here. James chapter number 1. Take your Bible. Open to James chapter number 1. And let's look at verse 17. Hallelujah. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes coming down from the Father of light, with whom the who with whom is no variableness, neither the shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. That's what comes from God. So if it is not good, if it is not perfect, for you it's not from God. No matter how long it may have been there, no matter how tough the situation may look like. No matter how difficult the circumstances may look like, if it is if it is not good for you, and it's not perfect for you, it is not from God. That's uncircumcised. So even though Goliath was a champion and has never been defeated before, as the king said, he's a man of war from his youth, never been defeated, you know, but. David saw him as uncircumcised. He said, you are not from God. Because if it's from God, it is good and perfect. No matter how long the situation may have been, no matter how long you may have been going through something, if it is not good and it's not perfect for you, it is not from God. This is the number one recipe. Because once you accept some people, you know, are tuned to say, well, I think that this is the will of God for me, that I should go through all of this, you know, it's the will of God for me, but I come to talk to you, if it's not good for you, it's not perfect for you, that is the number one. David said, this man is uncircumcised, he's not from God, he may be undefeated before, but I know that he's not from God, because, it's, you know, God is not, if the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians chapter number 4, 14 verse 8, it is that God is not the author of confusion. Another scripture says, you know, another trans is not the author of tragedy. So if it is not from, if it is not good for you, if it is not perfect for you, it is not from God. Don't allow the enemy to, to make you believe that because it's been too long, like Goliath, never been defeated, you know, cannot be solved defy scientific or medical you know, prescription and solution, then, then it is the will of God for you. It is not. If it is not good for you, it is not perfect for you, it is not the will of God. That's the number one recipe. That's the number one key. David said, this man may be undefeated. This man may be a champion from birth or by whatever circumstances. But what? I don't see him like that. I see him as uncircumcised. I want you to see that situation as uncircumcised. Once you recognize that this is not from God, then you are on the you are putting the first ingredient and you're ready for you know to cook up your victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's move down to the second you know ingredient for, for victory. What is the second ingredient? What did David say? You know, the first thing he said, this man is uncircumcised. This problem is not from God. You know, God is not the author of confusion. If the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God, let's look at the second ingredient, which is found in verses 34. Let's get back to that uh, uh, First Kings, uh, First Samuel chapter number uh, 17, and let's look at uh, verses 34 to 39. 34. First, uh, first Samuel chapter number 17. Let's look at verse 34. And let's see, you know, see what, you know, uh, David says. The second ingredient is maintain your testimony. Maintain your testimony. Maintain your testimony. You know, if God has ever done anything for you, if God has ever healed you of headache, you know, I, my, what you might call minor, if you ever experienced any testimony, if you can say, 
God did this for me, then you are ready to have, you know, a second ingredient and for your victory. Let's say, and David said unto Saul, Thy servant keep the father's sheep. And they came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And these uncircumcised Philistines listen, shall be as one of them, seeing that he had defied the armies of the living God. Oh, am I speaking to somebody this morning? That you can boldly say that this sickness has defied the body. Because the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. David said to the king, I was keeping the sheep. The lion came, the bear came. I killed both of them. And because God has given me victory before, this one also, the, the, the same will happen with this uncircumcised. David said, maintain your testimony. The Bible says, we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. If God has ever done anything, if you experience salvation through the blood of Jesus, if you are saved, you have a testimony. You have a testimony. And you can make a declaration. David made a declaration. He said, I have a testimony. God has done this before. You know, he, he empowered me to kill the lion. He empowered me to kill the bear. And so will he empower me to deal with this champion. Hallelujah. If God has ever done anything for you, no matter what you're going through now, the same God is able to do it again. The Bible said the God that we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, says, We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, which is already, and by our word of testimony. A word of testimony. Do you have a testimony? Can I have a witness? Do you have a testimony? Has God ever done anything for you? If God has ever done anything for you, then you are set up for victory. Hallelujah. You are set up for victory. If you can look at your life at any point in time and say, this is God that did this for me. The same God that did it for you is able to do it again. Hallelujah. Now let's 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 see let's see if the the, 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 the importance of, of this particular recipe, how important it is. David we I've just mentioned Revelation chapter number twelve, verse eleven, where the Bible says we overcome him by the will by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. What are you saying this you know if god did it for you he will do it again your testimony your testimony is the second ingredient you can stand and say god did it for me the same god that did it for me will do it david said that and he went on further and he went on further because look look at look at the book of revelation again look at the revelation chapter number 19 go with me to revelation chapter number 19 hallelujah revelation chapter number 19 and look at verse 10. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And here is a, you know, this is, this is John at the island of Patmos. And in, in Revelation 19, it says, in verse 10, it says, And I fell down at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of the brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. A call of a satire. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I love this. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. For some of you that look is looking for somebody to prophesy for you. If you have the testimony, if you, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior, you are set up for victory already. The, you know, the, John said, I felt that when I saw, I felt I wanted to worship. He said, hey, hey, don't do it. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If Jesus Christ 
is your Lord and Savior. If you can testify that you, the blood of Jesus, that the redemptive work of Jesus Christ is effective or has been effected in your life, that you are born again. If you can stand and say, I have experienced salvation, then you are already set up for victory. You are already set up to declare victory. He said the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is what David did. David said, so shall it be, Kabo Shatana. I have a testimony. I have a testimony. The lion came. The bear came. And I, God empowered me to deal with this one. And God with the same God that empowered me to deal with Goliath. I mean, to deal with the lion and the bear. He will empower me to deal with this Goliath. And he said to Goliath, I will cut off your head. Kabo Shatana. He did not have any Saul. When you read the story, David only had him a sling. He only had a catapult and a stone. A sling and a stone. That's all what he had. But he said to Goliath, I will cut off your head. He said, I will, I will kill, I will destroy this, you know, champion in a fight because I have a testimony. And Revelations chapter number 19 verse 10 says, so worship God for the for the testimony of Jesus, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If you have been born again, you can, de the Bible says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Hallelujah. You will say something and it will come to pass. David says, you know, I have a testimony and so shall it be to this uncircumcised so number two recipe, let me move on for one of time, because I could stay there like, for, for a, I, I love that, you know, because if you, you know, if you can look back in your life and say, ah, God saved me at this one, I should have been there, I had an accident, I was in an accident, people died, I should have been, if you can look back and say, you know, I have a testimony, then you are already set up for victory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your testimony makes you stand out among others. Your testimony is your trademark to your victory. Let me say that again. Your testimony will make you stand out among others. And your testimony is your trademark. You know, is your trademark to your victory. Hallelujah. Then let's look at recipe number three. My time is running. I, I want to move on before we wrap up. Recipe number three. Let's get back to that. That our story is found in First Samuel chapter, I think, number seventeen. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter number seventeen, and 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 we we are on recipe for victory. How do you live a victorious life even in this season? Our second, our second. Uh, uh, you know, uh, recipe is don't forget your staff, the power of your tongue, speaking from the position of authority in Christ Jesus. The Bible says God has raised us up and make us to sit in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. You may not feel like it, but that's the fact. If you're born again, child of God, the day you, the day you give your life, the Bible says he has translated you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of life. And in Christ Jesus, he has raised you up and make you to sit in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus, far above all principality and power. I love it. <laughs> far above all principality and power. And every name that is named in this world and in the world to come, you are seated in the most elevated position above principalities, above powers of darkness. In Christ Jesus, you have been raised up. And that's, that's what the Bible teaches us. You've been raised up and you've been made to sit in Christ Jesus, in a far above, in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. And so when you speak, you know, when you speak, heavens and earth listens, and if you recognize your position, the power of your tongue. David, in all of this narrative, you can see how David uses the power of the tongue all the time. He says, you know, so shall it be unto this uncircumcised Philistine. I will cut off your head. Hallelujah. That's what he was saying. I will cut off your head. The power of the tongue. The Bible says, in, let, let, me, let me just read this very scripture. Let me, let me read the uh, 
Proverbs chapter number 18. Go with me to Proverbs chapter number 18. Proverbs chapter number 18. And let me read verse 20 and 21. The power of your tongue, your confession. Verse 20 and 21. He says here, a man's belly, in verse 20, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. 21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hallelujah. A man's belly, your life, you know, your life is a composition you know, of what you are saying. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So your life is as a result of what you keep on saying. What you keep on saying. What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to your business? What are you saying to your marriage? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So if you if you if you're speaking life, if you're speaking life, you know, in you know, if you, if your mouth is confessing life, you you will begin to live the life that you're speaking. In the Bible says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So what you say matters. David said, you know, I kill the lion, I kill the bear, so shall it be to this uncircumcised believer. He even went on to say, he said, I will cut his neck. And when I look at him, he had no, no, no knife, no matchet. There was nothing that, that said, but David prophesied, you know, from his position, he prophesied, he maintained his testimony from the position of what God has done for him. He make a declaration. Brothers and sisters, if you have experienced God in your life, you can stand today and make a declaration and say, yes, the God that did it for me will do it for me again. Hallelujah. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And the Bible said, they that love it shall eat the fruit. Of what, what are you saying? The book of James said, James chapter 6 said, the tongue is a small instrument. It's, you know, it's like a steering in a big ship. You know, it, it takes, it turns the whole body. It can set it on fire. And it, it can set it in the course of destruction. Many a time it is what we say. Jesus said the words that we speak, they are spirit and the life. Every time you say something, you release a spirit. Your words are creative. Because God created the heavens and the earth. Everything you see, look around you, everything you see is as a result of words that were spoken. That is the foundation of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And God said, what shall happen? And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. And, and that's what Genesis is teaching us. So what are you saying? David said, so shall it be. I killed the lion, I killed the bear. So shall it be. I will kill this uncircumcised Philistine. I have a testimony, and I'm declaring from my mouth, death and life is in the power of the tongue. I'm not calling you, a, I'm not calling you a champion. You are uncircumcised. You are not from God. You know, I'm not going to accept that. I'm not going to accept. I see you as uncircumcised. I call you uncircumcised. You are not from God. You are not from God. The Bible says, whatever God has not planted, shall be uprooted. Since you are not from God, you will be out of my body. Since you are not sickness, whatever is your name, since you are not from God, you'll be out of my life. You'll be out. Oh, come on. Make a declaration this hour. You maintain your testimony. If it is not from God, it cannot stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, don't forget, number three is the power of your tongue. You have death and life in you. If you keep on saying it, if you keep on saying, what did Jesus say to the disciples? In the book of Mark, chapter number 11. Can, can we quickly get there before I move on? Oh, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, this morning. Thank you, thank you. Mark, chapter number 11. Look at verse, verse 23. Look at verse 23. Jesus taught this principle. And the Bible says here that, you know, it was a case of a fig tree when Jesus was hungry. And he came to this fig tree 
and there was no no nothing. He was very hungry. And then you know, and he said the Bible says he answered. The Greek word is apoklimai. He answered and said, he answered, he did not question. He answered. The problem is that we question. We question, God, why this? You know, why is this happening to me? Instead of speaking the answer, you know, speaking the answer, you know, everybody was questioning, why did Goliath look at this man who has come to defy the army? You know, look at this man. You no, know, David said, no, this man is uncircumcised. I got an answer. I will kill him. <laughs> I will cut off his head. <laughs> I have a testimony. I believe it. And then Jesus said, you know, when, when the disciples were, were surprised, the Bible said they call into remembrance that you know the fig tree that you cursed yesterday is dead today. When they were coming back in a, on a return journey, they said, Can you notice? It's already dried up. And Jesus said, Have faith in God. Look at verse 22. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever, you know, he says. Oh Lord. Now, it's, it is for you to say it and to believe it. That's what it's teaching here. You have to believe in what you say. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. No doubt God. No, he shall not doubt what he say. The Bible says, if you don't doubt your words, your words will take effect, and the word will create exactly what you say. Hmm. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. What are you saying this morning? What are you saying this morning? What are you saying to that circumstances? What are you saying to that sickness in your body? What are you saying to that situation? What are you saying to that financial situation? What are you saying now in this atmosphere? Everybody says, oh, the year is finished. Nothing can happen again. What do you say? Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. If thou shalt say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart that what you say shall come to pass, you will have whatever you say. That's what he said. That's what Jesus taught the disciples when they were shocked that the fig tree that he cursed yesterday, today is already dried, you know, is, is the dry wood. And they said, wow. He said, well, that, is that it? Jesus said, well, is that a big thing? No, this is, the, this is what you do. It's the, about what you say, if you can believe in what you say. Are you praying? Do you believe in your prayers? Do you believe in what you say? Do you, I, I, we shared something the other day, the prayer of faith. It is living out what you say in the closet. What you make, the declaration, you leave it out because you believe it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is the recipe number three. The, I mean, the ingredient number three, you know, the power of your tongue. Believe in what you say. Hallelujah. Let's move on to number the, the fourth recipe for want of time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, 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 this, and this is it. You know, the, the Bible says that, you know, the, you know, when Goliath came out, can we just get back to that, to, to, to our, our scripture this morning? First Samuel chapter number 17. Hallelujah. And let's look at uh, and let's, let's 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 just you know continue with that story there. And the Bible says when the Philistine came out, David you know take you know with him five stones. Hallelujah. I just want to get to that scripture and show you that because that is you know you need to take your five stones. And the five stones represent the name of Jesus. The Bible says the name of Jesus Christ in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10. The name of Jesus Christ is highly exalted above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Hallelujah. 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 Look at verse 48 and 49 of 1 Samuel chapter number 17. It says, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew to meet David, that David hasted and ran forward towards the army to meet the Philistine. 
<laughs> Everybody will run away, but David, you know, will go to meet the problem. Say, so I'm going to meet you the problem. I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to postpone you. I'm not. I'm going to solve you. I'm, you are a problem, and I have the solution. Hallelujah. And uh, David, verse 49, and David put his hand in his back and took then a stone and slung it and smote the Philistines in the forehead, and the stone sunk into the forehead, and he fell upon his face. So David took, a, you know, he, the Bible says he took five stones from the brook. But he only used one. The name of Jesus. The stones, the five stones, you know, represents the name of Jesus. The, God, the Bible says God has given us a name that is highly exalted above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of the things that are in heaven and the things that are on earth and even the things that are beneath the earth. Hallelujah. You have the name of Jesus. You have the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ has given you the victory already. It's just for you to stamp it with his name. It's just for you to seal that victory with his name. The name of Jesus. Look at the book of Acts chapter number 4. Uh, you know, verse 12. Let me quickly get down there for want of time. Acts chapter number 4, verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 4, verse 12. He said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given a moment whereby we must be saved. There is no other name under the heavens and the earth that is given among men except the name of Jesus. And that's why Paul wrote the name of Jesus is highly exalted above every other name. The name that is mentioned in this world and in the world to come. So even if they have not yet found the name for that sickness, the name for that situation, the name of Jesus has covered it in advance. Hallelujah. So you have the name of Jesus. You need to believe in that name. He said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. You have to believe in the name of Jesus. Salvation is in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is in the name of Jesus. Healing is in the name of Jesus. Take up the name of Jesus. There is no other name given among men. In that, that's what Peter says. There is no other name that is given among men under this heaven that they can be saved. It's only the name of Jesus that makes the enemies and demons and principality to bow. Because the name of Jesus is highly exalted. God, the Bible says God has exalted and given him a name that is above above every other name no matter what is the name take the name of jesus david took five stones representing the name of jesus he said i come against you goliath in the name of the lord you have not defied me you have defied the lord god the maker of the heavens and, the earth, and you have defied god i am coming in the name of God, I am coming in the name. The Bible says, blessed is it that comes in the name of the Lord. You are already blessed when you go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So David took those five stones. Acts, let me just read again. Acts again, chapter number three. Just go with me to ask. You know, this, this is getting more, more and more beautiful. Acts chapter number three. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number three. Let's, let's, let's quickly see this scripture. Acts three, verses Acts chapter number 3. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Acts chapter 3, verse 40. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 3. Oh. Let, let's skip that for want of time. Then, then let's just take the next recipe, please. The next recipe, it says, uh, they just acknowledge that my time is running out now. The next recipe is never walk in fear. Let's get let's get back to our about our Bible reading today. Let's get back to First uh, Samuel chapter number seventeen, verse forty-eight and forty-nine. Let's see here. Never walk in fear. Never. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, a power, and a sound mind. Never walk in fear. Never walk in fear. David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for God is with me. No matter what you're going through, don't allow, don't give 
fear a place in your life. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot put your trust in God. Don't allow the enemy to intimidate you. The Bible says he is he's like a roaring lion. He is not. He is just like. He is not. He is just like. He is not. He is just like. He is the, he's not the roaring lion. He's like. He's an actor. He's a pretender. He comes like a like he's an, a lion. He's going to, don't let him intimidate you. Don't let fear intimidate you. David says, I will not be afraid of the armory of uh, Goliath. I'm not afraid. People are afraid of me. I'm not afraid. When Goliath comes out, everybody duck and dies. They get under, they hide. The, the king and everybody, they run and hide. But when Goliath came out, David said, mm -mm, I am ready. And look, look at what he did. So he never, don't ever walk in fear. That is the, the fifth recipe and the last one. Don't walk in fear. Look at verse 48 and, and, uh, and 49. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet with the Philistine. <laughs> when, when they, remember from the beginning, when Goliath come out, everybody, you know, <laughs> they died somewhere. But David, in this battle, when Goliath came out, before Goliath could know, he saw David coming, running out. So, what? what? And look at what, what. And David put forth his hand in his back and took then a stone and slung it. And he smoothed the, you know, the, the, the Philistine in the forehead. So David ran towards it. Do not allow the enemy to intimidate you with circumstances and situations. The God that you serve is bigger than any situation. The Bible said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So don't, don't ever at any point in time exercise fear. The God is on your side. Power is on your side. God is for you. Paul said, if God be for me, who can be against him? against you so god is for you so david knew it when everybody was running away he was running towards goliath he ran towards goliath he never exercised fear hallelujah do not exercise fear hallelujah let's quickly you know as we run on let's quickly you know go through these five ingredients you know as a recipe for victory number one you need to recognize that the champion is uncircumcised that situation is not from God. If God is not the author of confusion, God is not the author of tragedy, God is not the author of evil. If it is, if David says, I mean, James says, you know, if it, every good and perfect gift comes from God. So if it is not from God, it's not good, it's not perfect for you, then that is uncircumcised situation. It's not from God. Number two, maintain your testimony. The number two ingredient is maintain your testimony. Think about what God has done for you before. Stand upon it and say, the God, David said, the God that helped me to defeat the lion and the bear, that same God is, will empower me to defeat this Goliath. I'm not afraid of, afraid of this Goliath. He may not have been defeated before. I don't care about your credentials and your profile, but you know what? You are uncircumcised. And God that gave me victory before, he's giving me victory over you once again. Hallelujah. Number three, the power of your tongue. Whatever you say matters. Jesus said, if thou shalt say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. Remember your word. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Wake up in the morning and speak and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Declare my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I will make it. God is on my side. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. And number four, take up the name of Jesus. Take up five stone, the name of Jesus. Don't forget the name of Jesus. The Bible said the name of Jesus is highly exalted above every other name. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of the things that are in heaven and the things that are on earth and even the things that are beneath the earth. You have a name. God has given you the name. God has given you signature. And that signature to your victory, the signature to your financial you know, deliverance, the signature to your marital you know, 
solution is there is the name of Jesus. The signature to your healing is the name of Jesus. Step up the name of Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus. Salvation and deliverance and healing only comes through the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the last one is never walk in fear. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Close your eyes this morning and let's let's put this ingredient together and let's have victory right now in the name of Jesus. If you're sick in your body, place your hands wherever it is in that you're sick. If you if you have a circumstance, a situation, just place your hands upon your heart as we pray. And the power of God is coming into that situation right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come by the authority in the name of Jesus. Your word declares that the name of Jesus Christ is highly exalted above every other name. And at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow of the things that are in heaven and the things that are on earth, even the things that are beneath the earth. We come by the authority in the name of Jesus. And we declare that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and we will rejoice in this day. We will have reason to testify at the end of this day, we will have testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare right now, by the authority in the name of Jesus, we speak to that circumstances. We speak to that body that is sick right now. Say, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. We speak to that situation now. Change for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak to that circumstances right now. Receive your miracle. Receive your deliverance. Receive your healing. Receive your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every satanic activity in the life of anyone listening to the sound of a voice this morning. The Bible says that which God has not planted shall be uprooted. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, whatever is not planted by God in your life, and those are the things that are not good for you. Those things are not, those are the things that are not perfect for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come against it by the authority in the name of Jesus, and we command it to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. We declare you victorious this morning. We declare you an overcomer this morning. We declare you successful in this morning. We declare you healed in the name of Jesus. We declare you delivered in the name of Jesus. We declare that circumstances change right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you right now. Let there be a supernatural incubation of the Holy Ghost upon your life, upon your situation. And let victory become yours in the name of Jesus. Let victory become yours in the name of Jesus. Let victory become yours in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. We give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor, and we give you adoration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lift up those hands and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord right now. It is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you glory and praise and honor and adoration. What a beautiful day. What a wonderful day. What a day to be alive. Father, we give you praise and honor and adoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Today is your day of salvation. Today is your day of miracle. Today is your day of promotion. Today is your day of testimony. You will, you will, you will, you will make it in the name of Jesus Christ. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. In the name of Jesus, you have victory. I declare you victorious in all your ways, in all your undertakings this day. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. We give you glory and praise in the name of Jesus. Wow, what a beautiful day to be alive. Thank you for you know joining us for this wonderful fellowship this morning. We give God the glory, we give God the praise, and we magnify the name of the Lord. We have some important announcements that are coming up. Our cell number is on the screen there. 
call and text you know or whatsapp for prayers and counseling we will be with you again tomorrow in the morning early part of the morning 6 6 10 uh, from the city of rumia in in poland and the, then we will have another session of fellowship every morning monday to friday we are with you in, in and just to fellowship and to share the word of god with you and to pray with you we we are willing to receive you know prayer if you want live prayer session just let us know and we will we will you know engage it and we will make it happen in the name of jesus christ a lot of you has been asking questions how do i support your ministry and most of you know that we are missionaries on that than a kingdom ministry our headquarters church is in houston texas the it's called the reflections of christ kingdom and then that's where we are here in europe to bring the gospel of the kingdom of god into europe into all the nations of Europe. Many of you want to support us. The information and the announcement that comes will give you all that you need to be able to support us. Later on this afternoon, our Father, our Apostolic Covering, uh, is going to have a session of Bible study. It's been powerful for the last two days. Don't miss it. The information is going to be on the screen shortly. God bless you. See you again next, next day, tomorrow, exact time. And God bless you. Bye. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank him for his mercies and we thank him for his grace. The world is full of people who are hurting. Many live their lives in fear, shame, loneliness, depression, and the list goes on and on. What if I told you that you could help change the lives of hurting people? Would you do it? Most people really desire to make an impact in the lives of others around the world. They just don't have a context that supports their desire. Well, Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries invites you to do what you've always wanted to do. Help change lives around the world. What exactly is Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries doing to change lives? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries is taking the good news of the gospel of the kingdom around the world through television, radio, and the kingdom reformation crusades, and people's lives are being changed. How can you help change lives? When you sow a monthly seed of $20 or more, you help share the love of God to the masses. You help send missionaries throughout the world to impact communities for God's kingdom. And most importantly, you help win souls for the kingdom of God. All it takes is your monthly seed of $20 or more and you can help change the world. To partner with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries today, simply go online to drdanacarson.com forward slash partners or call 281-824-4190. That's 281-824-4190. You can also mail in your monthly C to 7401 Gulf Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77017. Thank you in advance for partnering with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries, and we look forward to taking the kingdom to the world with you.